on today's episode of Dapper Daniel. This house is like a big old lot. You're gonna need to hop on the golf course to get your steps in. Square foot, feet, luxury. Oh, perfect, it has a roundabout in it. All right, I could do this. Going to whip the G-Wagon. Uh, so that makes sense. Hello everyone, welcome back to a neighborhood video today. I'm over here in Prosper. I'm currently at the Gentle Creek Country Club right now. Gonna drive by this real quick, but this is gonna lead us into the Gentle Creek Estates, uh, which is just a neighborhood around this country club. Thought I'd show you guys one of the older neighborhoods around here that's located right off one of the country clubs within Prosper. So here's the front entrance. It's not, it's a weird roundabout. It's like a roundabout, but it's not a roundabout. And then they have a building there. All right, but this is gonna take us into Gentle Creek Estates. These price points in here, we're gonna have stuff at like $850,000 all the way up to like stuff getting listed and sold at uh, like $3 million, $4 million. Oh, golf cart. Golf cart lady is about to make her rounds. It's currently 11.45 right now. The neighborhood over here is just located right off Coit. Uh, right across from me is Whispering Farms, another really big neighborhood. Uh, one of the older ones of Prosper where people were building on like an acre of land, um, custom homes and things like that. This is not gonna be any new construction. This is just gonna simply be all older homes dating back as early as 2000 in here. We'll get into the first section of the neighborhood uh, right along this road here, which is, if my handy dandy notebook would tell me, this is Prosper Trail. All right, we're on Prosper Trail right now. Now this is Coit Road here. Uh, just a little bit further, not even a, another, the next light after this would be uh, Preston Road. All right, so now we're on Coit. If I just took this straight down to 121, that would take me about like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, up here, it's all just like a one lane. All right, uh, let's just let's just go one more, just for good measure, you know. Just for good measure. Uh, there is a section in here though that is completely gated. Uh, that one has a difference uh, in HOA. The HOA kind of goes between 330 up to 440 semi-annually, and then if you're in the actual. If you're in the actual gated part, which is a little bit more north of here along Coit and uh, whatever that other road is that we'll get to. I just don't know the name of it. My bad. Other thing is that that gated community, the HOA in that gated community is like $1,100 semi-annually. So, and you don't get any amenities with it. You get the golf course around here, the country club. It is a membership based. But uh, this section here is called the Villages. And then on this back side of them here is where the, uh, actually if I go a little bit further, the uh, gated neighborhood is. Actually, you can't get, you can't access it through here. This just leads us to like a, another cul-de-sac. But right now the current price range for homes sold in here in the last 90 days has been anywhere from 850,000 up to 1.675 million. Here's the one that they had for sale in the cul-de-sac. I think I pulled the specs for that house. I'm not too sure. Can't quite remember. Uh, and then on the back side of them is where that gated part of Gentle Creek Estates is. We'll keep going around through here and showing you guys more of this neighborhood. But yeah, homes dating back all the way to like 2000 in here. And then they finished up this neighborhood in about 20, uh, 2016, 2017 is when they finished. But right now for the homes active, you're looking at like a median active of 1.5 million. Like I said, they had some stuff, low 900s, 850s, getting closed in that area, getting listed. But also, homes getting listed in here are just maybe dropping down a little bit and then coming back up. Now, and I'll get into details about homes that have closed in that thing. Right now with this market, uh, we're going into winter, so, during winter, inventory levels go lower, but with everything happening in this market, you know, inventory inventory is rising right now. Now, that being said, we're still low in supply in some areas, but things are kind of coming back up. People are like, if it, it's a, is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Just look at the inventory. If six months of inventory, we're in a buyer's market. But right now, people feel like we're really in a buyer's market because they're not having to do crazy bidding wars and crazy things like that. 
when if you look at the fundamentals of things, we're still technically in a in a seller's market. We'll kind of see what the Fed does. I think it'd be a really good time to buy in 2023, but then again, who knows when a recession will hit. Everyone's talking about a recession. I think what you just kind of got to watch right now is the labor markets next, see what happens with that. I will say the one thing, now I mean there's multiple things, right? But I'll just say the one thing right now that uh, you know everyone's gonna be comparing to, uh, to 2008, right? If something were to happen, everyone's like, well, 2008, this was happening. In 2008, this was happening. Well, in the 2008 market, people were getting loans like just everywhere, just handed out, like super underqualified, like not qualified at all. The people that bought houses around here, well qualified, like over qualified to buy houses around here. So that's that's one of like the main difference. Also, Airbnb wasn't a thing back in 2008. That's also another thing. So when people kind of start comparing 2008 and what could happen and things like that and, you know, get into a recession and all this types, types of different stuff going on with the housing market, there's some different things that weren't happening back in that market compared to what's kind of happening in today's market with things. I just think, you know, people that bought their houses just this past year, two years, were well qualified, over qualified. A lot of people came in well over asking in cash and those things too when they were closing on their house. Now, there are still plenty of finance buyers, but I don't think you're going to see the same type of deal happen as we did back in 2008. Now, back in 2008, what do I know about that market? I was in, what was I in? I was in like fourth grade. Hold on, let me do the math on this. 2000 kindergarten, 2004 kindergarten, 2006, I believe I was in third grade when it went down. So what do I know about that market? I just see the history of it and then, uh, you know, I've learned about it, but uh, that's what I noticed that was different from, you know, looking back in the history of that market compared to what's going on with this market and, and those things. All right, that was my little rant for the day. Oh, here's the Gentle Creek Amenity Center. So they got a pool area. Doesn't really look like they might have, I don't know, they don't have any type of like workout room or anything like that in there. Interesting. All right, and then we'll be into their like more expensive part of the neighborhood where there's houses like on big old lots. There's no mud in here. So there's nothing like that. And then the, uh, I mean, this is a really old neighborhood compared to like everything else, but I say, I say really old. I mean, 2000 isn't like really, really old, but when you kind of compare it with the rest of Prosper and so many new things coming in on Prosper, it kind of is. Um, all right, next. What, okay, so what are the lot sizes in here? The lot sizes in here currently go from like 85 by 165 all the way up to like 175 by 300. The 175s to 200s, those front yards are going to be in the next uh, subdivision that we kind of get into. And these houses on this back side are all along the golf course on this side. So the golf course kind of runs through, you know, a good amount of the neighborhoods throughout here in subdivisions. There is an empty lot in here that hasn't been built on. Sometimes with these older neighborhoods, with some stuff like this, somebody will buy a lot and just sit on it forever. And sometimes you can you can scoop those up now, whether you want to be like the newest house in the neighborhood compared to everyone else. Let's cut around here. Well, this is an interesting, can't even see over that bush. The car's too low. All right, so that probably used to be a model home because it's got an American flag in the front of it. It's usually what happens in these neighborhoods. If you go into the older neighborhoods and, they're, and you're like, why does this house have a flagpole in front of it? Well, it's probably because that was the model when it was getting built. Uh, when the neighborhood was first getting built in here but this whole neighborhood is like 630 acres and then the golf course itself is like 250. they don't have any like walking trails you're gonna need to do the you're gonna need to hop on the golf course to get your steps in oh this is a really nice i kind of like the look of that one a little bit different than all the uh brick and stone throughout here kind of have some of these other ones with tile roofing um but yeah, you're gonna have to do the golf course for your walking. They do have like sidewalks and things like that throughout here though. 
but they don't have like any specific trails. And then, here, let me just show you this, guys. This is what I'm talking about. Just an empty lot here. Sometimes you can find these and then you can, you know, work with the realtor and then I can see on the MLS who owns this and uh, potentially reach out to the agent that closed on it or something and then you can reach out to somebody who's got an open lot like this, hasn't been built on and see if they want to sell it. Sometimes that happens. That's very rare, but sometimes in these bigger master plan communities, uh, you will see that. And then currently the average price per square foot on the homes getting listed, there was five homes active. From there, 303 per square foot was what you know the average was compared to all those houses but the, on the low end it was like 200 per square foot all the way up to like 492 per square feet square foot feet feet let's see if we can get into the uh, bigger neighborhood in here let's see if we can find the other neighborhood that has some of the bigger houses on full acres, uh, a couple acres. Some of them are on like a couple acres. Um, they're more tracks. Some of these neighborhoods, you know, they're more of a track, a long track down, and uh, you know, your house kind of goes a lot, has a lot more depth in the front. All right, coming back on. Coming back to the houses on the back side of the golf course here. So here's some more up on this back side. Well, it looks like they're redoing their whole front yard landscaping. That's a really nice one there. I like the look of that one. gotta figure this out. I know there's a way to get over there. There's like one road that cuts uh, in between. You kind of go through the golf course and then you go over into the next neighborhood or next subdivision. All right, now we're in the section of where most of the houses in here are gonna be on well over an acre. Some of them are gonna go a lot deeper, but they're all gonna have like angles of like either tree line or the golf course in here. And as you can tell from the last neighborhood we were in, they uh, feel a lot more spread out. Wow, that is, that is nice. Sorry guys, sometimes I just get caught up. I forgot I'm making a video and I just like wanna stare at some of these houses driving around here. This area is where you're gonna have like the three million, four million dollar houses in here. Just cause you know, you're sitting on well over an acre and some of them have like really nice built out backyards uh, with like gazebos and pools and basketball courts and little putting greens and back houses all right which way should I go let's go I think if I go right this takes me down to a cul-de-sac in here some of these people also have their front yards gated with some things so like this person gated gated oh whoa that's pretty cool all right, I'll flip back around and show you that house. That's gated. It's all gated. Uh, besides these down here. Oh, we got the one down in the cul-de-sac. Gated. All right, this one is luxury. Yeah, more luxury on this side. And then for the five homes that are currently active on the low end, there's a 2005 pre-owned. It's listed at $825,000 right now. It's dropped to $799,000. That's a four bed, three and a half bath, 4,011 square feet at 199 per square foot. There's one for sale on the left right now. I believe that one's the one listed at like 1.4. Then there's a 2000 pre-owned listed at 1.4 million. 
That one's a four bed, three and a half bath, 4,160 square feet at, at 360 per square foot. And then on the high end in here, which would be along uh, within this neighborhood, there's a 2007 pre-owned four bed, four bath, two half baths, 6,045 square feet at 492 per square foot. Oh, and then this person's got their whole backyard kind of vegetation everywhere, giving you some more privacy. All right. So yeah, that's like on the high end, you're gonna have like this area, homes in here are gonna be like 400, 500 per square foot. And then within that other neighborhood where the houses are, you know, closer in together. Okay, check out this one. This one's got like a whole nother little house to it. Maybe you guys can see that. It's got like a whole nother house. That is really nice. All right, and then for the leases in here, there was one that closed, it was a 2005. It was listed at 3,950 per month and then closed at 3,500 per month. That was a five bed, four bath, 4,127 square feet. The school district in here is gonna be Prosper. And then the schools themselves, I wanted to flip back around and show you guys this one. Well, this one's for sale, so why not we just make a make a little you? Oh, perfect, it has a roundabout in it. All right, I could do this, yeah, but here's one for sale. This is luxury. All right, that was fun. That was fun while it lasted, right guys? All right, and then for the elementary school, it's gonna be Cockrell. Then for the middle school, it's gonna be Rogers Middle School. For the high school, it's gonna be Prosper High. And then for the college around here, you're gonna have UNT Frisco, which is gonna be off Preston. So that's gonna, that's pretty close. And then 380 and the Dallas North Tollway aren't too far. They're about 10 minutes away, to, kind of depending on which way you take out of here. About 10 minutes away though, so not, not too bad to hop on the tollway and then head down to Dallas. Dallas itself is about 40, 45 minutes to travel down there. DFW Airport, also 45 minutes. Fort Worth is like an hour away. The high school, Prosper High School, is seven minutes away. The hospital over in uh, Frisco, Texas Health, that one is 15 minutes away. And then the grocery store over at the Gates of Prosper, that's eight minutes away. All right, so this is the way out of the neighborhood. Now we're on this other street here, which is Frontier Parkway. So Frontier Parkway is even gonna run all the way down into Salina. But uh, of course around here it is a one lane. Cause that's all Prosper is, besides Preston. Prosper has just got a whole bunch of one lanes. And then you got these two houses just, or actually three, there's three houses in here. The uh, biggest houses and biggest piece of land around Prosper, these three houses right here, uh, are just across from Liliana. At some point they might get sold and then knocked out and turn the whole thing into a development, but I don't know. It's kind of interesting to have those. So on that back side of it though, and I'll go left here, is gonna be where the gated part of the Gentle Creek Estates is gonna be. So I'll drive by that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get in, but. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the video so far and showing you guys kind of one of the uh, country clubs around Prosper. I like kind of mixing things up. I mean, I do so much new construction with, with things and I try to bring out, you know, different stuff, vlog videos, development videos, pro and con, and kind of throw that in with my new construction. Because I really do love the new construction stuff, working with you guys on that, but I also have some families that like looking at the pre-owned. Now I'm not working with a whole bunch of families. Not my real estate game isn't really quite at that point where I'm working with families by that are looking to buy houses at $3 million. But, you know, one can dream. Actually, are we gonna get in right now? Did we just time this up perfectly? Did we just literally time this up 
perfectly. We might have. We might have literally timed this up perfectly. Okay, so this is Gentle Creek Place. And the houses in here are gonna be, uh, you know, the same size as the first neighborhood we went into on the first area. Uh, you're not gonna have like a lot of depth on these, but your price point is gonna be a lot higher just because you're in a gated part now. Oh yeah, going to whip the G-Wagon. But here's just another look into uh, one of the subdivisions, one of the neighborhoods along Gentle Creek. So there's like four different areas you can kind of choose from to kind of get angles and looks at the golf course. A lot of the neighborhoods around here are kind of situated. A lot of houses have good views of the golf course. Personally, I'm not one to want to live on the backside of a golf course, but you know that it's, it's up to you if you want that. You're just gonna have to have really strong windows. Oh look, they got a nice little pond out here. Not really, uh, I would, I, see that's the thing, I was expecting the, um, this is your amenity center. So, that's a little depressing, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. That's where I'm gonna end today's video. Let me know down in the comments, text me. I have all my information down below. I love working with you guys, trying to find a house. I am a realtor, I can help you find that house, or if you're looking to sell here and then move into like a new construction, please text me guys. Other than that, peace out y'all. Take it easy as always. Thanks for checking out my channel and watching that video. I got more videos floating around here. If you're in the market to buy or sell real estate in the DFW area, contact me, Daniel, at the Home Expert team. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, besides that, uh, bye.